You might want to clench your butt cheeks because Cyberpunk has made a massive comeback and apparently some people are saying that it is all because of the edge runners, some people are saying that it is because of the mod menu and that, this and that and in my honest opinion, it is none of that my guy, it is none Bruh. of that, it is all because of this baddie, look at this baddie, this is, Bruh. it's all because of this baddie, this is why the game is coming back, this is why they're making a comeback and there's a video I want to show you but can you actually believe it? This game came out in December of 2020. The fact that it is killing it right now, that's amazing. I mean, drop a thumbs up if you think Cyberpunk uh, is something that you're gonna play. Dislike if you're like, nah man, Cyberpunk is not for me anymore. But apparently 112,000 people were apparently playing an hour ago and 24 hour peak has been 136,000. Sheesh! And there's a video I wanna show you. We're gonna take a look at it. Is Cyberpunk still Shiza? It is awesome. Let's check it out. Do you years, CD Projekt Red and Cyberpunk 2077 have both been in a chaotic state to say at the very least. Lots of controversy, lots of problems, much of which I've documented extensively on this channel. But now the game is starting to turn- Any of you, any of you speak Urdu or Hindi? Turn it around. Obviously, I think some people will say it's too little too late. A lot of people, I know I see this in every comment section I make a video on this game, there's a lot of people that are still very upset with CDPR with how they went about this game. One, one if you're actually really upset with Cyberpunk, two if you're like, hey man, I'm gonna forgive them, this is my game, this is how it's gonna work out. But if you speak Urdu and Hindi, I seriously think that they have water in their hands. They have water in their hands. They have development and the marketing for this experience. None of that is forgotten. We all will remember that for the next number of years. Whenever The Witcher 4 comes about, there's going to be that skepticism. But even for myself who- Dude, when that game comes out, everybody's like, Yo, man, don't get hot. Don't pre-order. Don't pre-order. Look at Cyberpunk. I've experienced all of these issues and have been very critical of CDPR. I think I can admit this game is in a good to decent state now. Uh, my main issues were the jank. I obviously still enjoy Enjoyed Cyberpunk 2077 since day one. I've been firm on that stance for a long, long time at this point. But there are obviously clear issues. You're a shill. You're a shill, bruh. I, I, this is something that everybody's gonna say. I'm, I've been reading like comments. Uh, either people will say that you, 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 you're a shill. If you actually appreciate people who say you're actually a shill. If you hate, then you're obviously toxic and problematic. You're toxic and problematic. I mean, damn. There is literally no middle ground. But let's keep up, Buck 50 at like 15 FPS on the last gen. My guy, you kidding me? Not necessarily in regards to jank, but the artificial intelligence and the lack of interactivity Bruh. within Night City, which makes the world feel very not alive. But CDPR yeah. for the last year or so has been working to fix that. And it seems like with Phantom Liberty, the first and only expansion coming for the game, we're going to see the game take another giant leap forward. And CDPR hopefully will end this experience on a high note as they move on to The Witcher 4. And then probably in a number of years, maybe we'll get to Cyberpunk 2084. But right now, Cyberpunk 20... <laughs> Already? Bumbaka. 77 is experiencing a resurgence, and that is largely thanks to the Edge Runners Netflix series. In a similar vein to Netflix's Witcher series, which obviously isn't based on the games but the books, it still had a major effect on The Witcher 3's player count and the amount of people that decided to go check out The Witcher games made by CD Projekt Red. And now mm -hmm. CDPR is once again feeling that with Cyberpunk as the game is- Okay, so just like a little while ago when he made this video, it was 61k, and right now it is at 136, 24 hour feet! Dude, everybody's playing this. I, I've uh, once the Modern Warfare 2 beta is over, it's almost done. I'm gonna download this game. I'm actually gonna try it out as well. Player base has skyrocketed in the last couple of days, and that isn't necessarily just in regards to how awesome the Edge Runner series is, but also because of the new content additions that came with the recent patch 1.6 update. And then obviously in 2023, before Phantom Liberty, we should be having some awesome quality of life improvements, which includes vehicle to vehicle combat, as well as again another overhaul of the police system. So yeah, Cyberpunk. Bro, that's by far the biggest. That's by far the biggest improvement. I remember, I, don't correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that one of the devs came out and said that, you know what, the, 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 the police system, the, that's not even our priority, that's not even the main thing, and people were like, ah, yo, we want that, what do you mean? And I'm really glad that they're gonna be fixing it. I need more NPCs on, I need more activities in the open world. I want Night City to feel alive. Why can't we fly a car? After all, we're talking Night City. There has been flying cars in the background. Could, could you actually imagine how lit that would actually be? Because this game has been about the future. It, it's been about the future. Give us things that are about the future. Yes, cybernetics are cool. Yeah, this is actually good. Yeah, having a nice big dong is good. But can a brother perhaps fly a car as well? 77 has had quite the transformation since its disastrous December 2020 release. But you will have to allow me to gush over the Cyberpunk Edge Runners Netflix anime series for at least what? a- What? Yo! Bomboka! No way! No way! 
I'm oh, oh shaking. God. I'm shaking. This is exactly what I was saying. Is that real? Second or two, because this collaboration between Studio Trigger and CD Projekt Red is absolutely excellent. It uses- Yo, is that real? Is that real? Or was that a mod? In-game assets in a way that I've never seen. And it's an interesting adaptation because it's so different. And I definitely think that is one of the better video game adaptations that we've ever seen. I'd say that Netflix, at least in those regards with the anime series, have been knocking it out of the ballpark the last couple of years. Arcane last year was also absolutely phenomenal. And Edge Runners, what I love is that it enhances the cyberpunk universe. And all of the locations that you experience in the game are in this Bruh. era series. Pinpoint, they do not change anything. That's what makes it so great when you return back to Night City. One, if you watch Edge Runner. Two, if you haven't. I haven't already. After watching the series, and you return to these locations that have a new meaning. It feels iconic. It feels nostalgic. And it also makes me want to see some of these characters within this anime series make their way to Cyberpunk 2077 or future games just because of how developed and how invested I got into them. Because after watching this Edge Runners anime series, I apologize to Judy and Pan Am, but you gotta move over for the new best Cyberpunk girl. Bumbaka! Nah, man, Judy, Judy's the best. There's no way you're gonna move on, but damn, man. Yo, could you imagine if Judy was actually straight, bro? She would be wifey material, like, oh, 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 oh. You know what well, I mean? Like, I, I'm telling man, Judy, Pan Am can go pound sand. Like, seriously, Pan Am can go pound sand. I, I know I'm, I might be like triggering some of you out there, like, how dare you, Skizzle? How, how dare you actually say that to the Pan Am? But listen, man, Pan Am. Ain't got no game. Ain't got no Girls, game. and that is definitely Lucy I'm sorry, and Rebecca. But I made these remarks. I'm sorry, but it's the truth. Marks on Twitter a couple days ago, but one thing that Edge Runners made me think about is the fact that that storyline is kind of what I envisioned Cyberpunk 2077 was going to be. That's what I thought was going to be V's journey. The way that David Martinez develops through this series as he becomes more robot than man and he feels the consequences Damn. from those actions, that's entirely what I envisioned V's journey to be. But even though I did like Cyberpunk 2077's story, I do think that Edge Runners is more. Yeah, what Cyberpunk story actually good i would say that the first half of the game really gripped me even in any the beningings at launch but then the plot kind of fell short right like there were so many glitches and bugs i still never finished it i ended up watching it on youtube though i ended up I, I know i know you shouldn't have done that but i ended up watching because the, the game at launch was so buggy I was playing on PS5, the Sony Pony 5, but the game was running on the PS4 jet engine. I will tell you this though, ever since they came out with the next gen patch, I was pretty content with it. It felt like if the game was just all of a sudden was a lot more playable than playing the PS4 version on the PS5 and I would say vice versa for Xbox and the fact that now they're coming out with 1.6 and the patch 1.7, we know that the cough system is gonna improve, we're gonna be getting a brand new DLC in early 2023 which I cannot wait to dive in and now we're gonna live stream one more time for the cyberpunk 2077 till we get the cyberpunk 2088 Bombocad. to what cyberpunk is all about essentially david martinez has a more fleshed out natural arc and with v it's just a constant race start to finish and i think one of the biggest mistakes that cdpr made was just with the entire jackie wellis storyline those first number of hours we really needed to flesh out that character of v and have him experience his time with jackie and it also doesn't help the fact that they kind of spoiled his death within the marketing of the game before a launch. That is something that probably should have came as a surprise, but if we had not had that montage scene and we got all of those scenes and we got to experience more of V and Dude, Jack I hated the fact that he died so early in the game. His death was kind of impactful, but I felt like the game would have been way better if he was still alive till the very end. I think the opinion on Cyberpunk story would be more positive from the overall community surrounding this game. But even so, as Thoughts? I pointed out earlier, the Edge Runner series does a lot of things that expands upon the Cyberpunk universe. You really feel the cruelty of the day to day life, and you also experience Adam Smasher. He truly feels like a brute force that is unstoppable with this anime series which is a little different than that pretty easy boss fight that we have towards the end of cyberpunk 2077 but that is largely because of the balance issues that the game suffered around launch so yeah the intense action scenes fantastic soundtrack awesome memorable characters such as main and rebecca and a storyline that only gets better and better as the show goes on i highly recommend edge runners it is indeed a cautionary tale one that shows how unforgiving night city can be with nobody being safe from being sent to the crematorium no matter how much I, you see the streets are so empty my man They're, you can see the streets are ridiculously empty these you accumulate edge runners is also very adult especially I, I remember when the game first came out everybody was saying that you know what the streets are empty because of the roni situation Bumba like, this is why the streets are empty i mean damn man it was some very very raunchy scenes definitely not for kids but this show is an emotional roller coaster with the relationship of lucy and david being at the center lucy is a titan of a netrunner and david a super cyber enhanced merc you feel how deeply flawed each of these individuals are with the mistakes they make some of which is foreshadowed through other characters but the care and yes love they have 
over each other is on full display to the very end. So watch this if you haven't, especially the dub, which has a lot of great voice talent. Uh, I personally never watch anime, though. I'm not a weeb. Any any weeb around, if, you, if you're a weeb and you watch this, uh, is it good? Is it a banger? I mean, everybody's saying it's a banger, so dang, it's probably going to be. But as somebody who's not a weeb, as somebody who doesn't watch anime, would you recommend it? Would you recommend this to be the first thing you watch as someone who's not a weeb? Let me know, man. Let me know. Including Giancarlo Esposito portraying a fixer in Night City. Good stuff. And fortunately, my admiration for this show is something that everyone is sharing after they watch this. As currently on Oh my god, that's Haram! That's Haram! That's Haram! What? Tomatoes, there's 10 critic reviews with an average rating of 8.8 .8 out of 10, and it currently sits at a 100%. And then the audience Damn. scores a 97 out of 100% with an average. Wow! Is that paid? Is that paid? I know some people were like, yo, man, these are paid reviews. These are shield reviews. <laughs> you always, it happens all the time. If it's 100%, if it's anywhere closer to 90, uh, everybody would say that. But I feel like that these reviews are genuine because listen, man, the audience, if you give them something good, if you give something good and people love it, the audience would love you back. They would give you 100% straight up. Even if the, the, the movie or the show is like more of like an 80 or a 90, don't care gonna give you a hundred and if it's subpar if it's shiza if it's trash it, it, and realistically it's more like four out of ten or maybe five out of ten people don't give a damn nobody cares instant zero instant zero that's what people do on the internet it's crazy man we're trading a 4.8 out of five stars based off of over 667 reviews thus far besides just reviews this is also something that has become extremely popular on netflix as it broke the top five most watched shows just the Damn. other day and interestingly a cd project red developer responded to all of this admiration and love for the series saying it's pretty crazy and unexpected for me personally it's an anime which is already alienating for a lot of people it's based on a game set in cyberpunk also rather niche i expected it to be liked by a specific group of people but the appeal seems to be much broader and Damn. This is a sentiment that's being shared by all of his colleagues at CD Projekt. In, or, in Urdu, I would like to say, in Logan, in a pakka chidiyon ko na pani palaya. Unki dwaye lagi hai. Red. Even the cyberpunk Red. creator himself, Mike Pondsmith, took to Reddit, gushing over this new series. We also have articles like this popping up from PC Gamer saying, Welp, the Cyberpunk 2077 anime made me want to give the game another shot. And this Damn. writer was not alone, as it looks like over 68,000 others decided the same thing just the- <laughs> Yo, uh, pump the brakes. <laughs> right now, it is 112,000. Just let that sink in. I, I don't know. What was the peak number? I know the all-time peak number was 836k, but what was the peak numbers like a month after? Was it like somewhere around 1,000, 2,000 people? I genuinely feel like it was like that. And to see this game come back the way it did, this is crazy. I don't think anybody expected that because normally whenever a game dies this bad, they just don't care for it. They don't revive it. They don't. They, they stop dropping support. They drop support for it completely. They stop catering to people. They don't care for it. And they're moving on over to the next one. But not this time. The other day. This is the largest peak player count the game has reached since, I think, the debut month the game came out. And just a yeah. quick update on those numbers. They are continuing to rise rapidly. As on Steam, the 24-hour peak now stands at 86,000 concurrent players. And Damn. also, CD Projekt Red themselves have revealed that... And new update... 136,000. Each day of the week, Night City has been visited by 1 million players, both new and returning. What we are witnessing isn't a slight increase. This is a major comeback, a major resurgence for this game and the future of this franchise. And obviously, the people returning to the game isn't just because of this anime. It's also because the game has changed a lot since December of 2020. You can see on the Steam ratings that the perception about Cyberpunk 2077 has changed quite a bit. The review consensus at launch was very mixed, and now, within the last couple of months, it has gone from being mixed to very, very positive, with I think about 85% of the ratings being positive reviews for the game on Steam. As I've said in previous videos, the modding community also factors heavily into this. I genuinely, I really hope they improve the gunplay as well because like aiming in first person, it just feels a little bit off. The aim kind of feels off. Is it just me or you You fell that way too? Jaw-dropping additions being delivered recently and with CDPR releasing official mod tools with patch- What? Yo, I want this. Okay, he said mod tools. They release mod tools. Damn. Yo, we need this stuff. We need stuff like that officially in the game. It is already in the game you gotta understand this they have this in the game my man you see this big ass car flying in the background it's a small okay maybe my face can kind of hiding you you see that big ass dot flying 
My man, why can we fly that? 1.6, there should be even more exciting things on the horizon. But for those who have not touched this game since launch or just haven't bothered to jump in yet, here's a brief overview of what has come in terms of post-launch support thus far. New Edge Runners themed content, there's a new side mission which allows V to gain David Martinez's iconic jacket and some other Edge Runners Easter eggs scattered about Night City, such as Rebecca's shotgun being obtainable in City Center. A couple of new gigs which are short but provide some unique gameplay situations. Damn. There are a number of apartments that can be purchased, each with their own unique style that fits the area it's located in. I would say that the interior design and the amount of detail and polish the interior had in this game was absolutely phenomenal. Appearance customization has been added with you able to change some features at a mirror and almost everything at a ripper dock. You can preview clothes now before purchasing at shops. Transmog has been added allowing you to truly immerse yourself in the style of your very own V while not having to worry about the stats of the clothes that you have Bruh. on. There's a ton of new photo mode poses, a fun little arcade mini game, various new jackets and pieces of clothing, a bunch of new power, tech, smart, blunt, and melee weapons, a personal favorite of mine is the Senko LX, a tech submachine gun that I absolutely adore, a variety of new weapon attachments such as muzzle brakes and scopes, CDPR rework with various weapons adding new unique effects, the O5- Yo, Call of Duty be like, okay, if you want all of those attachments, purchase a $20 bundle, $20 sniper bundle. rifle feels like a giant cannon now, while the divided we stand assault rifle has bullets that are more likely to miss now, but turn into biohazard clouds that poison nearby enemies. Vehicle controls and mechanics were overhauled, various perks have been altered and or added to further complement different play styles. With patch 1.5 specifically, CDPR delivered a massive gameplay overhaul to various systems, such as clothing mods to better balance the experience. The UI has seen a number of additions making traveling around Night City easier. One example would be Man, like, I remember for the fact that they were supposedly, or they were supposed to come out with a, the, the game was supposed to have that metro, that subway system, and that got cut because they didn't have time. I wonder if they can actually bring that back. I would say the chances seem very slim because they're already working on the next Witcher game and they're working on the next DLC. Could you imagine the next DLC comes out and it breaks the game? That would be disaster, Bruh. man. That would be a, truly a bumbleclap moment. I genuinely Bruh. hope that's not the case i genuinely hope whenever they come out with this dlc in 2023 i hope this is polished because right now people are giving them a second chance and normally it's very rare like you know they always call people toxic gamers toxic and problematic toxic and problematic but gamers they are to certain extent they are very hard to please Bruh. i know a little bit shocking but it is it's, it's the truth using the in-game minimap when traveling by vehicle is now zoomed out. The overall AI has seen a drastic improvement with vehicles and NPCs having smarter reactions to our actions. Our romances have been extended with further messages and images being sent from our love interest. We also now can sleep in bed wow. with our given partner. Fixers now reward V with a- Wow, that's actually pretty good. Panem sending you a hey we. Uh, <laughs> Listen man, Judy, Judy's the best. Ow, 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 ow. Judy is the best. Judy is the best. FF Panama. Special reward after completing all of their gigs. Water effects have been added. Weather systems improved with rain, fog, sandstorm securing more. Oh my god! Bro! Yo, she looking like a snag, bro. Ugh. Often, the optical camo cyberware was added. A personal favorite of mine, allowing my V to go invisible Dude, for- that's my type, actually. Uh, I would just change up the hair. Now, nah, the hair actually kind of- Nah, she's perfect, actually, though. Mm, that's kind of like my type. No, 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 no. A short time during combat. Then of course the performance and visual fidelity has been greatly enhanced over time with new ray tracing effects being implemented and thousands upon thousands of bugs being fixed. Besides all of that there are Mega a lol. number of other smaller additions and quality of life improvements. It's a good it's a W it's a W though. such as new hairstyles, being able to easily reset your perks with eddies, obtaining your very own iguana, nibbles moving around your apartment, being able to change your motorbike's neon rim color, a cross progression nipples he said nipples? Cloud save feature added in, a benchmark mode for PC Bruh. players, the ability to craft and bulk, new melee takedown and equip animations, new random interactions that occur as you traverse through the world, and many, many more things I'm quite frankly forgetting. So a lot has indeed changed from day one to now with Night City. Obviously for many returning players or those who already experienced much of what Night City had for at launch, this isn't necessarily going to transform this game into something completely different or new, but what CDPR has delivered on is expanding upon the base game experience in a variety of different ways that make multiple playthroughs more enjoyable, and again for those new players, it's a night and day difference between version 1.6 of the game and the day one 
one version, especially on console. For those who have not checked out this game since its messy launch and are waiting for the big story DLC Phantom Liberty, this game will feel very, very different in a good way. And again, it will only get better before then. As CDPR announced a few weeks ago that- Yo, few will, uh, I'm, I'm still not 100% sure. Will Phantom DLC be like a brand new map? I know it's gonna be a story, but is it gonna bring like a brand new map or is it just gonna be on the same city, which is perfectly fine. But I, I do hope it brings subway system. I cannot wait for the cop system though. That's probably my gonna be my biggest, uh, biggest, uh, that's my biggest thing. Future updates only coming to current gen consoles will introduce new cyberware, a new gameplay loop for melee, new actions in the perk tree, a vehicle to vehicle combat feature, and a complete overhaul to the police system that previously got a rather lackluster yes! and small overhaul right after launch. Yes! All of this likely will come about in early 2023, assuming Phantom Liberty launches in the middle part of the year. Additionally, for PC players, Nvidia and CD Projekt Red announced just the other day a new ray tracing overdrive mode is coming Damn. in the game, along with up to four times performance increase with Nvidia's upcoming launch of DLS. Four times! Four times! Are you out of your mind? Yo, where's Youngya? Oh my god! Oh my god! Four times you did from 23 to 107. Sheesh. As three. And specifically in regards to Phantom Liberty, the only expansion coming to the game, it's going to be taking us into the combat zone, a new district in Pacifica set before the game's endings. Based on prior leaks, a new major character Songbird will persuade us into visiting the combat zone, which is controlled by- Oh, so yeah, the Pacifica. So that, that area that was, that was kind of like under construction, now that's gonna be, is that, am I getting that correct? Because I know there was like a building in GTA 5. You remember the skyscraper that has been in development since the very beginning at launch it was uh, under construction under construction and that well, we better get gta 6 and that is still not fully construct and you're saying that cyberpunk and cdpr is finally going to be having that done within like two years that's massive bro militia with corporations and the ncpd staying away as shown in the teaser trailer songbird appears as a hologram in our head and she leads us to the exact location in which a flying ship carrying the president of the new usa crashes inside of the zone and it definitely seems like this expansion is going to have an escape from new york vibe to at least some of it i say some as cdpr has called the expansion a spy thriller which does again align with the contents of the leak that came earlier this year year. Again, I'm not going to be diving into any of the spoilers with that, but regardless, we will have new major characters, new quests, gigs, street stories, world encounters, activities, weapons, cyberware, outfits, and more. Maybe even by then we'll see the addition of New Game Plus, although CDPR's developers have indicated that they're having some major issues with bringing that to the experience. Now, even Damn. though Keanu Reeves is returning as Johnny Silverhand in the DLC- <laughs> Yo, yo, oh my god! Dude, the crazy part here is that they actually baited the homie Keanu, man. Keanu was like, the metropolis of the, the night city. You're amazing. Or what, what was that? You're, you're breathtaking. Yup, that was the quote. I effed it up. Boom, my god! See, it does seem like his role will be small, with an in-game reason Damn. being presented for why that is. The completion of this expansion will also seemingly provide some changes made to the game's endings for RV. So definitely a nice big finale for Cyberpunk 2077 is on the horizon. But for now, the game is enjoying a comeback, one that did not seem possible 20 months ago, but yeah. is happening now thanks to the game reaching a- Ladies and gentlemen, this is actually really good to see, you know? They always want to call us toxic and problematic, but uh, as gamers, I feel like that this is genuinely really, really good to see. We have massive news about GTA 6. We're hearing that the trailer is rumored for this October. There has been a lot that happened. We're hearing about a live stream in November. Click on this video on the screen and see how the leaker also got caught. Subscribe and I'll see you there.